What's up Knights, Xantos here, and in our video today we have the pleasure at taking a look inside Madoki Games and their upcoming hero challenge in Knighthood. Today I'm joined by Lindsay of Madoki Games who will be helping us showcase a very good boy to all of you. Knights, strap yourself in and make sure you have your doggy biscuits ready because we're about to dive into a world of bacon. <laughs> I've prepared a list of questions that I'll be quizzing Lin on in regards to the new hero. Hopefully I can cover all the bases that knights might be curious about. Not only was I curious of the technical side of this new hero and their stats and usability in game, but I was also really curious to hear about the process that the team goes through when designing the heroes that we've fallen in love with in knighthood. Today we are very honored and privileged to be working alongside the mother of knighthood, Lindsey Graham. Lindsay, thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate you being on the channel and giving us an inside look at the upcoming Hero Challenge in Knighthood. Thanks, Santos, and it is great to be here talking to you about Bacon, who is indeed the best boy. I do also want to apologise in advance for the sound quality from my mic. Despite Fiori's insistence after the AMA, I have not yet bought myself a decent mic. I'm just going from my camera, so... Uh, apologies if I sound like I'm trapped down a well. That's quite all right, Lynn. I have your vocals cranked to 200% their regular power, so hopefully we can make out what you're saying from down there. Look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Now, for my first question, I have to ask, what were the inspirations that went into the design of this awesome new hero? This is definitely a very different take on what we're used to seeing, so I'm curious. How did it come about at the design table, and did the design change throughout development? Whenever we create a new hero, it generally starts at the same point, which is the design team determining what class, alignment, and strong versus tags we need. And we do this by looking at our hero matrix, which cross-references all those things, and we can see what gaps are missing. And we also take into account what other heroes have been released recently to try and make sure that we're like not adding multiple heroes of the same class. From that point on, it's a close collaboration between the design and art teams, um, but there's sometimes a bit of variance over which one takes the lead. So quite often with events, we just let the artists go nuts. So it'll be, this is the event, um, come up with a hero. I think occasionally we'll give them very vague um, guidelines. So for example with Eileen who is the troll hunt hero, our lead designer Chihiro wanted a feral child with a hammer. Um, so that is how Eileen was born. With Queen Crita it was the other way around. So we already established that the hero for the Heroes Challenge was going to be Queen Kryter, who was an established character in the lore of Knighthood. And because she had connections with multiple other heroes that were all associated with the White Peak Troll invasion, she kind of had to look like she fit in with that era and that culture. For this Heroes Challenge, we decided to be a little less restrictive on exactly what the character was going to be. Uh, we just said that we wanted an alchemist and we gave the art team a list of the different races in knighthood and also a list of characters from lore that would potentially fit into an alchemist role um, but then veronica who's one of our enormously talented artists uh, came to me with a sketch and saying yeah just just hear me out i know it's not on the list but what about an awakened dog and it was this most amazing sketch of a Labrador in a wizard's outfit. And I was like, yes, yes, that, that is gonna be our next hero. Um, there can be no other option. And that is basically how uh, Bacon started to come into form. So at that point, Bacon didn't have a name, but I had already come up with a backstory for him. So I passed that on to Veronica and she came up with some more detailed concepts that tied in visually a bit with that uh, backstory. And she also did numerous dog breeds. So there was like a Shiba Inu, there was a Doberman, uh, a Spaniel. I was, the, the Spaniel came up such a close second. Um, but yeah, in the end we went with the, the rough collie, the old lassie dog. Um, he did go through a little bit of a change because the, in the original concept he had a staff. 
and we felt that made him a little bit too magey. Um, we know people are already saying when they saw his hat, oh, he's a mage, but in Knighthood we have established that alchemists also wear pointy hats because we have Dr. Phlox and we also have rogues with hammers and bazookas, so we are fairly flexible on our stereotypes for different classes. Once we picked what he looked like, which was the lovely rough collie version, um, we then worked on his powers um, because before it can go to the animation team they need to know what the hero is actually going to be doing to make sure that any animation they do ties in, uh, particularly with targeting on the base powers. So, so for example, uh, Bacon's base power is a what we call a cone effect, which means he hits one target on the front and one target on the back. So his power needed to look like it was going straight through the two lines. He didn't go through a huge amount of changes other than that. Um, there was one, but that was more of a bug. Uh, so when he originally went into the game, it turned out he was actually massive. Um, so next to the knight, he was approximately the size of a shire horse which caused some fun and shenanigans in photo mode where he basically just completely uh, covered the knight. Um, so that was a, a bit bigger than we wanted after all. He was supposed to be a dog and not a dire wolf, so he got shrunk down to the size he is now. Bacon is named after the famous 13th century alchemist and wizard Roger Bacon, who amongst other things is famed for helping create the modern calendar system most of the world uses today, the Gregorian calendar. He had very strong opinions about the Julian calendar. Uh, he described it as being intolerable, horrible and laughable. Uh, so yeah, I bet he would have had a great time if Reddit had been around uh, back in the day. Just for future reference, a direwolf sized dog hero in game is fully acceptable. Although I am absolutely in love with the design approach that you've gone with for him. And it's really cool to hear about how decided you were on his direction once it was brought to you. I feel like he's definitely going to be a favorite of many. For the next question, I'm curious as to how Bacon ties into the lore of knighthood. I know that knights are going to have to wait to get the full story from the hero challenge itself, but can you give us a bit of an inside peek as to where Bacon fits in the story of knighthood? So Bacon is Millicent's dog, and then later her student in the arts of alchemy. That's amazing. I really didn't expect him to be Millicent's dog, and I think that just made me fall in love with both the heroes even more. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of us are wondering how Bacon indeed stumbled upon his powers in alchemy, and how in fact a canine is capable of such profound feats as an alchemist. Bacon started his life as a regular dog, uh, no powers at all, but he was involved in a lab accident, uh, which the Heroes Challenge will go into a bit more detail about, and it was through that lab accident that he gained his powers of speech and superior intellect. It does also reference his difficulties in becoming an alchemist due to his lack of opposable thumbs. I can imagine he faces a bit of difficulty in comparison to other heroes. Nevertheless though, he seems to be keeping pace. Now that we know where he fits in the timeline, I'm wondering, did he contribute to the Battle of Archon and was he fighting alongside Millicent? He didn't fight in the Battle of Archon, but it did have a big impact on his life. Uh, he was only a little tiny puppy when the Battle of Archon happened and he was sadly orphaned uh, as a result and ended up being rescued and adopted by Millicent. Because uh, if there's one thing this game needs more of, it's orphans. I really enjoy how much enthusiasm you had about that answer. Everyone loves a good Bruce Wayne backstory with a happy ending. Now, it's hard to believe that a face as adorable as this pupper's could have any enemies. How did Bacon end up with his rival that we'll be facing off against in the Hero Challenge? The Battle of Arkham saw our heroes drive back the Dark Ones, but their work didn't end there. So Bacon joined them in trying to help protect what was left of Arkham and to help in its recovery after such a terrible war. Some of those that tried to take advantage of Arkham in its weakened state were three renegade wizards uh, who you've already met in game. The one in particular that becomes uh, Bacon's nemesis is Nero the Exalted, 
So in game, you know him already as Nero the Heretic, who is an outlaw, but is actually pretty undead. Uh, in this case, you meet him in his earlier incarnation, so he is sort of freshly undead. He's also definitely not a dog person, uh, which in my mind clearly makes him the worst enemy in the entire game. I couldn't agree more. We have multiple red flags popping up for Nero here. Anyone who hates on this doggo must just be pure evil. Where does Nero stem from, and how did he become such an enemy of Bacon's? Nero was one of three leaders of a secret society of renegade wizards. They sought to achieve power by various uh, nefarious means, uh, and unfortunately for Nero, at some point, he shuffled off the mortal coil, and his two fellow leaders eventually got round to resurrecting him, um, but he was already slightly manky uh, when they did so, so their, their resurrection skills weren't the best, and it's something that he's a little bit touchy about. Bacon has a particular uh, dislike for the undead, and a particular fondness for bones, uh, none of which are a great combination if you happen to be an evil undead uh, in Bacon's path. That's amazing. Dogs like bones, so that equals strong versus undead. Can't argue with that logic. And on a side note, I personally love to see how these hero challenges expand on the lore. We've already spoke on Bacon's rival, but what friendly faces can we expect to see in this hero challenge? Oh, there's so many heroes. Um, yes, so this hero's challenge uh, definitely has the most lines of dialogue of any of our hero challenges, which will either fill you with glee or dread, depending on your opinion of reading in-game dialogue. Um, so yes, you will get to have chats with plenty of the heroes of Arkham. Uh, obviously Millicent, uh, Lance, Istara, Sarah. You'll also get to chat with other heroes that share Bacon's love of alchemy and slaying the undead. Ooh, I'm hopeful for an interaction with Grizz. I feel like the two aren't too far off from each other in design and it could make for some strange animalistic interactions. I'm sure the big question that everyone is very curious about, what are Bacon's powers and what can we expect to see out of his full star capabilities? His rage power is called Who's a Good Boy? And as all rage powers do, it targets all enemies and it just deals distributed damage. Um, so we heard from a lot of players that they felt that the alchemists were missing like a really hard hitting distribute hero. So we're hoping that Bacon can fluffily fill that uh, area there. Um, that's why he hasn't got a status effect or strong versus tag on his uh, rage because if we do that, then it takes the damage down. So we think this just makes him like possibly a little more versatile. His max star perk is that he increases the critical chance of all alchemist heroes, so he is a very good boy and a very good friend to all alchemists. His base power is called Go Get em, and as mentioned previously, this is a cone targeting power, which means that he hits one enemy on the front row and one on the back. So Go Get em damages those two enemies, uh, targeting the armor first and then health, but it also applies delay, which I think is going to be the most interesting aspects of his base power. This hero's build is going to really open up Alchemist class for a lot of players. I am unbelievably excited to get my hands on this hero and begin slaving away for shards. Does this hero have a specific standout niche in game, or can you see knights using this hero in a multitude of areas? So I'm hoping that Bacon will fill a few roles uh, in the game. Um, so with his base power, which can charge exceptionally quickly with the correct gauntlet synergy, uh, his delay will be really useful in PvE uh, because it's quite versatile because it targets not only something on the front row but something on the back, so there can be numerous encounters where that will be really handy. Um, and with his rage being a sort of hard-hitting, uh, just pure power distributing, uh, that should make him quite useful in uh, arena and against guild bosses as well. And of course he also fills the uh, tr 
previously tragically empty adorable dog niche that we had in uh, Knighthood, which I always felt was something the game was sorely lacking. He's definitely filling the void in old Xanto's heart that he didn't even know was there. Puppers in Knighthood is a must have for sure. Now, as we all know, the heroes that we use in Knighthood are heroes of the past that have ultimately met an untimely demise. I hate to ask, but how did Bacon pass from his original life? Bacon had a tragic start to life, but he didn't have a tragic end. Uh, he lived to a ripe old age and died quietly in his sleep. That's honestly the best possible answer I could have gotten for that question. I'm happy he had a good life with Millicent. Now, when can we expect to see this adorable puppers in-game? Hopefully by the time this video goes out, you'll actually already be able to see him in-game um, in the hero section of the codex. Uh, but as for when the hero's challenge is actually going to take place, we don't do dates. You know we don't do dates because if we do dates, things go horribly wrong and get jinxed and slip and then everybody is horribly disappointed. Uh, but it is coming soon. Usual disclaimers apply.